Right, so I'm going to show you something really cool here. So we live in a, a, a world where we, we pass values to programs, we have values in memory, and those values are often there for everyone to see. So we might use encrypted traffic, uh, and also we might store values in an encrypted way. But the values that were used for our programs uh, often are available in, in, a, in a clear text or a clear format. So if we want to move to a world which is much more trusted and where data processors can actually operate on, on values without actually knowing what the values are, how do we create a computational infrastructure uh, to, to implement this? So the question we're going to, going to pose is how do we compute something without actually knowing what the input values are, any of the intermediate uh, results, and the, also the, the end result. For this, we're going to look at homomorphic encryption. So with homomorphic encryption, what we have is that uh, we can have a processor. Um, so in this case, we have Eve. Eve is the, is the processor. And we'll take values from Bob and Alice. And all we want to do is to be able to add the salary for Bob and Alice together and find the result. But for Eve not to know what the result is. So with Bob, Bob will encrypt a value and then Alice will encrypt a value and then Eve can compute the result and then give a value back and it's not possible to actually see what the actual input values were. So in this case we can make decisions, we can find out, uh, say, how much money Bob has in his bank account without actually looking at all the transa his transactions. So some of the things that we might do is who's older, Bob or Alice? We don't want Bob and Alice or Alice to reveal their age, but how do we create a competition that allows us to find out who's older, Bob or Alice? We might also have a competition where Bob has worked a certain amount of hours and days, and so has Alice. She's done uh, a different number of days and hours. How do we calculate how much their income is without actually revealing the days they worked or even the hourly rate? And for Bob and Alice, how do we create a function that allows us to calculate the, the total income without actually revealing the income? So there are methods around which gives us what's called partial homomorphic encryption where we can do some functions like add and multiply or a scalar but they don't give us the full opportunity to write different types of logic functions. With DGHV we have a method where we can encrypt the values and we encrypt it with a secret key and then we can build a function which will operate on the encrypted values and then give us a result back and it's possible then to decrypt with the secret key that we've actually used to encrypt the values. As far as someone sitting here, they shouldn't be able to tell what the actual original values actually were. So in this case, if this function or this data processor was breached, then there's no way that, uh, that you know, a hacker can actually find out the values or any of the intermediate calculations that were actually used. So the way the method works, and I'll try to simplify something here, is that we'll take our input values as the integers, we'll convert the integers into each bit, and then what we'll do is we'll apply a key and we'll create cipher bits the cipher bits can then be fed into a cipher circuit or a circuit. We can actually define the wiring of the circuit. And the circuit uses simple operations such as XOR, exclusive OR. XOR is 0, 0, gives us 0. 0, 1 gives us 1. 1, 0 gives us 1. And 1 and a 1 gives us 0. It's a basic adding circuit. 
we can also get a multiply uh, operation or an AND for just dealing with uh, binary. So with that, we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. It's like a multiplier. 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times 0 is 0, and so on. This becomes an AND function, and this becomes an XOR. So if we can create our cipher circuit, then we can work on the cipher bits and actually create the logic, the wiring of it, uh, to create our output. Then we, create, we have our output and the number of bits to give us our results. We can then apply our secret key again and reveal our values back again. So as far as the data processor knows, then the values here and here are unknown to the cipher circuit. So in this way we can actually process on value process on values uh, which are encrypted and then encrypted bits. So the function that uh, that this research team came up with is this. We take a, a random value R, we take our message bit this is one bit, a zero or a one. We multiply the random value by two. We take a random value Q and our secret key, our secret value P. These are large numbers. As long as these numbers are much larger than two times R, then it will work out. Okay, so we take all those values and multiply P and Q, uh, two times R, and then we take our message bit. And we create our cipher bit. Okay, so this is this is we're only really interested in one bit at a time. This becomes our cipher. We then take the cipher because of the way this works out. We take the mod of p. Remember that's the remainder uh, given a division, an integer division by p. And then we take mod to the base two to give us a result of a zero or a one. Okay, so that's the basic operation. So I'll just show you how this operation works here. If we just bring up this one. Okay, so that's what we have. P, Q, 2 times R, and M. So I've just selected a value of Q here. And Q is a random value. Uh, there and R as a random value, and we'll select a Q value. Okay, so if we have a value of 0, then if we have a value of P of 1001, Q is 10, R is 7, then it gives us a cipher of this. Once we do that calculation, to take the mod of P and then the mod of 2, we get 0 back again. So that means that we've, we've ciphered correctly. We'll try it with a 1. So in this case, we're generating a value of Q of 7 and R of 12. R is the, the, the noise that we're going to add to it. And P is the secret number. So we can see here, here's the cipher. And then when we decipher this again, we get the value back again. So we'll try another number, Let's see, 1005. Okay, we can see we get our cipher back again. And we'll try it with a zero, and that works too. Okay, so this is the simple uh, calculation that we make for our, our, our bits. Okay, so that's, that's the operation that we're going to use uh, for it. So let's take a simple example. And the example I've got is very simple. We could do this with uh, integer addition with 8 bits, 16 bits, 32 bits, but I'll just keep it simple so that we can actually see what's going on. So the function that we're going to, or the circuit that we're going to implement is a 2-bit adder. So 2-bit adder, uh, so if you think about it, uh, let's, let's think about it. So a 2-bit adder is 0 plus 0, 0 gives us that. 0, 1 plus, plus that should give us that. Then 1, 0, 0, 0 gives us that. And when we have that plus that, then 
we're going to have a carry over here. So that becomes one, and then that becomes one. Okay. So in a two bit adder, we're going to have a carry over, possibly. Uh, and we're also, we can also have a carry over from the, the second bit there. If we have one, one plus one, one, that gives us one, add one is one, zero. One plus one plus one is one, one. So we have a carry over here. So that becomes one, one, zero. Okay, that's like three plus three is equal to six. So the circuit that we have is we take the least significant bits, if we have A and B. So we take the two least significant bits, we exclusive or them together. Remember that's the exclusive or symbol there. And with the function that we looked at before, uh, we can take two bits together and it will do an exclusive or, or it will do the add operation. And also it will do an and operation. Uh, so that function that we looked at will actually perform these operations in a, in a homomorphic uh, encryption method. Okay, so that, that is uh, the least significant bit is this bit and that bit exclusive or. The carry then becomes uh, A zero B and B zero. That's that function uh, there. That becomes the carry that we have here. Uh, and with our homomorphic encryption, the the function that we just looked at, that that actually works. Uh, we'll get our value. Then our Z one becomes uh, A A one and B one uh, XOR. Then we take a carry and we XOR it with that one there. So again, uh, with our three bit input, we should be able to implement the homomorphic encryption with that function that we just saw there. And then there's the carry there. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll, uh, we'll, en we'll uh, encrypt the bits. We'll then put them into this function, this circuit here, get the outputs and then hopefully we'll be able to get the result back again. So if we go back to our function here. Right, so I've created a very simple Python script in order to, for you to see how this works, okay? So we're going to be inputting our values. We're going to be creating some random numbers for each bit and also some random Q values. These are quite large values that we have. We'll create a, ran, a single random secret value. <coughs> we'll then uh, cipher each of these bits. These become cipher bits, so it won't be possible to tell what the bits actually are. We'll then put them into these functions that we've got. Remember, uh, that's the, uh, the addition, that's multiplication. And with the function that we have, the, we will be able to implement that for our bits. We'll calculate each of the encrypted values for our two-bit adder. We're going to show what those are and then what the cipher bits are, what the encrypted values. We'll do our functions done our functions and then we'll decrypt so we can only decrypt if we know the value of p what our per, which is our private key okay this is the paper that, that it's that it's based on okay so let, let's go ahead and see what we get okay so the first value is zero zero plus zero zero and we'll just determine that so there's the results the results is three zeros which is correct let's try again random values just to see if it keeps keeps working and we can see that the cipher values are changing each time the encrypted values are also changing but each time the result stays the same okay we're using different r values and different q values and a different p value different secret key each time but it doesn't matter each of the the values are changing so let's do zero one plus zero zero Okay, so hopefully the result is 0, 0, 1, and it is. So there's the result there. 0, 1 plus 0, 0 gives us 0, 0, 1. We should be able to see that each time, if we use a different p-value, 
different R values, different Q values, then each time the values will change, but the result will stay the same. Anyone looking at the cipher bits and also at the encrypted values will not be able to determine what the original values were and what the output is. If you have a look, you'll see that, uh, say for the addition, sometimes it's even and sometimes it's odd. So there isn't even a least significant bit which is revealing the answer at all. Okay, so that, that works. So let's now do 1, 1 plus 0, 0, which should just give us the same output. And we have that, okay? So we can see the output is 0, 1, 1. That works. Let's do 1, 1 plus 0, 1. So in this case, the 1 and the 1 gives us a 0, and we carry forward the 1 here. 1 plus 1 gives us 1, 0, so we carry forward with the 1. So the result here is, is correct. So again, we can keep going, we can keep trying different R values, different Q values, and then each time we'll see that the result stays the same. So let's now try 1, 1 plus 1, 1. So 1, 1 plus 1, 1 gives us the 1, 0, 0. So we'll make that a 1. Okay, 1, 1, 0. And we can see here the result, a 1 plus a 1 gives us 0, carry forward 1. A 1 plus 1 plus the carry forward 1 gives us a 1. We carry forward 1 and we get a 1 there. Okay, so hopefully you can see that uh, what we're doing here is we're encrypting the bits, we're putting it into our circuit. The circuit is performing an operation and there is no way that we can actually determine what the va input values are, what the intermediate results are, and what the final result is, unless, in this case, we know what the value of Q is. Okay, so that's that's the code that I've implemented uh, there. Okay, and this, this is the way that, uh, that we'll see things like zero-knowledge proof uh, develop for blockchain, uh, to be able to uh, put things onto the blockchain which will not reveal any any values, such as with Zcash. So for Zcash, it doesn't reveal any of the transaction values. Uh, so in the way that it does that is that we can still calculate that Bob or Alice has enough money in their account to be able to pay for something, but we can't actually reveal how, how much they've actually purchased or how much they actually have in their account. Okay, so hopefully that showed you how to compute something without actually knowing the input values and the results. Okay, thank you.